Being resourceful. If there's a problem, there's a solution. Most people focus on the problem instead of the solution, and that is why they fail. I started to become known as a, as a huge clothing company. Meanwhile, I'm still a waiter in Baldwin, Long Island, and I have these 10 little stinky t-shirts in my basement. Rise and shine, it's espresso time. <laughs> I wake up every morning. Espresso, keep me going. I wake up every morning. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael. This channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back, a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know there's something more inside you too. You have Michael Jordan level talent at something. So let's start your day off right together. Grab your coffee and sip on today's message from Jeff Bezos. Also, if you wanna have more self-love and confidence, check out my 254 series, they're free. The links to join are in the description below. If everything has to work in two to three years, then that limits what you can do. Stress primarily comes from not taking action. If you absolutely can't tolerate critics, then don't do anything new or interesting. I spent an unusual amount of time with my uh, grandparents and especially with my grandfather on the ranch. So he had a ranch in South Texas and I would spend my summers there from age four to 16. And they, when I was four, they were taking me for the summer to kind of give my parents a break, you know, sort of because they were so young um, and it was useful. I was a handful, I'm sure. And, uh, and uh, anyway, he, he he, he, he created the illusion for me when I was four years old that I was helping him on the ranch, which of course could not have been true, <laughs> but I believed it. And, um, and then as, by the time I was 16, of course, I was actually helping on the ranch. I, you know, I, could, I can fix prolapsed cattle. I can, you know, we did all of our own veterinary work. Some of the cattle even survived. Um, <laughs> and uh, we fixed windmills and laid you know, water pipelines and built fences and barns and fixed, fixed the bulldozer that you guys talked about. And so one of the things that's so interesting about that lifestyle and about my grandfather is he did everything himself. You know, he didn't call a vet if one of the animals was sick. He figured out what to do himself. And uh, so what does it mean? No delegation? Being resourceful, I think, mm. is the, you know, that you can always, you can't, if there's a problem, there's a solution. Mm -hmm. And of course, as you, as you mature and, and get into the business world and anything you do on a team, you very quickly realize that it's not about just your own resourcefulness, it's about mm -hmm. team resourcefulness and how does that work. And Most people focus on the problem instead of the solution and that is why they fail. I like to say that there are a million reasons why your ideas will never work out and only eight why they will. Either way, you're right. So it's better to focus on the eight. Your heroes, the people that you look up to, the people that you love and wanna be like, right? Your heroes all succeeded with less than what you currently have right now. If they can all do it, so can you. The only thing in your way are your excuses. So one of the things that I love most about both my wife and my team is that they're always willing to find the way. One of the things that Nina loves most about herself, I had her fill out this form maybe two years ago of like, what do you love most about yourself? And at the top was, she's a fast learner. She loves learning new things. She loves taking on new challenges. And I love that. I love that about her. And I love that in people. I think you should be a fast learner. I think you should love learning. I think you should always be taking on new opportunities. Right now on my YouTube channel, I've split up my channel into eight or nine different channels. And then just recently I split them up again where we launched a top 10 channel just for the top 10 videos. So the top 10 videos aren't on my main channel anymore. And uh, then we're doing an everything channel where if you just want all the content, it's, it's all on one spot. So it's chaos, it's crazy. My whole team has to be restructured and everybody's taking on new projects and responsibilities. And we were supposed to have a one month transition phase to do it. That was the recommendation. That was that was the aggressive recommendation to have a one month transition period. And for me, one month just is death. It's just death. I mean, I said, oh, okay, great, one month. But then as I'm into it, on the Tuesday of like the first week, I'm like guys, we need to launch like this weekend. <laughs> we need to launch this weekend, let's go, right? And, and there's so many reasons why it's not gonna work and there's so many problems and, and yes, we're gonna make so many mistakes and people aren't trained properly and there's more work and we need to, you know, we figure out who wants to do what and how, so many issues, awesome, let's go. 
I think about Ray, for example, on my team who has been doing all these thumbnails. So uh, I, have a, I have a set design for my top 10 rules thumbnails that people love and it's, it's been going like that for years. And I've always been on my team to say, I don't care that everybody thinks our thumbnails are great, they can be better. How do we make them better? And so finally, finally, after years of testing, we finally found the format that would win, that would, that would beat our original thumbnails. And there's minor differences. We zoom in on the face, we got rid of the second logo, we make the text bigger, minor differences. And then Ray has been going back and updating split tests, doing against our old videos. And we have 13, 1400 different split tests on our videos. It's crazy. I think I split test more than anybody on YouTube. So he's going back and updating all the old thumbnails and trying to prove a winner each time. And he's maybe, I don't know, halfway through. These are, think about it, how many videos we have on the channel. We've got 6,000 videos. A lot of them are, are top tens. Now with this change, I found a new format. We found a new format, a new thumbnail, different color scheme, different text, different pictures, <laughs> different logo, new thumbnail format. And we found that it's working. And so I said, Ray, I know you just changed all the thumbnails. <laughs> we gotta do it again. He's like, this is so exciting. Let's go. <laughs> like, I love this guy so much, right? Where most people, what are they, they're going to complain. They're going to say, I just did all this work on this other thing, right? You don't want to be around people like that. And you definitely don't want to be that for too many people. The problem is for so many people, that's you. That's not even people around you. That's you. You're thinking about all the sunk costs that you put into something. You're thinking about, I invested so much into this thing. And, and now you want me to shift everything? Yep you need to be on the yep side now. You need to adopt that kind of mindset, that kind of personality, that just because I worked before, it doesn't mean it's gonna keep working. You find something new, it's better. Let's go. This is what the whole game is about. So how do you do it? How do you be more resourceful? I'm gonna give you a three-step process that I think will help. Step number one is focus on the eight. So I said at the beginning, there are a million reasons why it's not gonna work out. And if you talk to your friends and family and, and social media, they'll find a million more reasons why it's not gonna work out. Great, there's a million reasons why it's not gonna work out. Now there's two million and there's eight while it will. Only focus on the eight, focus on the eight. Be, be rigid, be disciplined, stop thinking about, those negative things are still there, awesome. Those reasons, sure, are awesome, great. I'm only focused on the eight. I don't care about all the reasons why it's not gonna work out. That, that's, that's where most of the world lives. That's the land of negativity. I'm here and it's a small lane. It's easier. There's only eight reasons why I'm going to win. I'm just going to pick those eight and focus on that. That's it. Choose. It's a choice. You're right either way, right? You are right. If you say, I'm not going to win because I don't have the education and the resources and the money and the parents and you're right. You've already decided you're right. Yes, absolutely. You're right. But people with less resources, less connections, less ideas, less talent, less skills than you, they've done it. You're just full of excuses. If you want to believe the excuses, then you have already lost. If you want to buy into the eight reasons why you're going to win and surround yourself with your heroes who have done it, and that's a daily source of inspiration for you to keep going off and doing it, then you will win. Focus on the eight, not the million. Number two is model success. This is what really helped me. I mean, now I have, I have all these channels and we're modeling success all day long and, and I've built an entire business around this, but this is the thing that saved my business from the, from the first start, right? Like Bill Gates, how he built Microsoft saved my company, right? Learning from his story made me finally start to have some success in my business. And then from there, every morning I would, I would read a little bit about a successful entrepreneur. Now I'd much rather watch a video than read, um, but hack your own learning style. Maybe you prefer to listen to podcasts. I listen to zero podcasts because I'm not an auditory learner. Learning how to model success, finding people who've done the thing that you want to do does two things. One, it gives you hope. Seeing what they came from, like go look at Oprah's story see what she came from and then for you to say that you have less resources less available to you than oprah did at the time that she was growing up is ludicrous is crazy you're way more equipped just because you have the internet than oprah ever did when she was getting started but maybe you hate oprah awesome great who do you want to learn from jeff bezos awesome go look at his story look at the people who you look up to your heroes study them not how they make an extra million dollars now but zero to one how did they get started what did they have to go through learn from them study them and it gives you inspiration to know that it's possible and it gives you strategies because chances are what worked for them could also work for you it won't work for you 100 percent it's like trying on this cowboy hat that's just a little bit too oversized and you gotta, you gotta tweak it and, and take in some of the sides, maybe add a little bit more stitching somewhere so that it fits. But modeling success takes you 80% of the way. 
You don't have to come up with all the genius ideas yourself. The model's been proven. Go out, copy it, apply it to yourself and start winning. And step number three is tell yourself this is just a warm up. I love this strategy. I think this is one of the greatest things you can ever do for your self-confidence, self-love, self-respect is whenever it's difficult, whenever it's hard, whenever you, you're at your breaking point, whenever you're like, oh, I don't know if I can keep going. You tell yourself, this is just the warm up. This is just a warm up. I'm capable of way more than this. And what it does is it actually tricks your brain a little bit to believe in it. And now you've just broken through a comfort zone. Now you've broken through to another level of excellence. You've just raised your standards a little bit higher. It's extremely powerful. So let's think about it. If that thing that is all consuming, all encompassing is all you're capable of doing right now, that's a problem. That means you're never going to grow beyond this thing, right? You're, you're never going to scale and become something bigger because this is the max that you're capable of doing. And I remember talking to Alex who helps me run Toronto Dance Salsa and what he was stressing out about. And we have big ambitions for this business. We have, we have big ambitions for where Toronto Dance Salsa needs to be and Alex needs to be the guy to lead it. If this little thing that, that feels all encompassing, right? But if this little thing owns you, you're never gonna get here. So tell yourself, this is just a warm up. I'm capable of way more than this, way more than this is the beginning. This is baby steps. I'm way stronger than this. Tell yourself that you say it out loud. Tell yourself this is just a warm up like that. Put your hand down. It's just a warm up. Say that three times and see how you feel. And then get to work because you know what? It is just a warm up and you're capable of way more. Let's go. Now I've got a really special bonus script that I think you're going to enjoy. But before that question of the day, I want to know who are three people that you're going to model success after they, that you look up to them, they're your heroes. You want to learn how they got started. Who are the three people that you want to learn from? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you promise to take action after watching this video, we don't just watch videos here, Believe Nation, we do something. If you, 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 you promise to take action after watching, put hashtag believe in the comments as a promise to yourself and then get to work. When you were again in the early days, yeah. at one point you only had 10 shirts. Mm -hmm. How did you utilize the power of broke to get the word out? So, you know, when, when you, you know, Jay Abraham, who, you know, is really my mentor, he loves to say OPM is other people's uh, manufacturing, manpower, marketing, mentors, and you can make money off of other people's mistakes. And I took inventory on myself, and I knew I wanted to get into this area of business, but I, my inventory was that my liabilities were, I knew nothing about manufacturing, but my assets were that everybody was shooting these little videos around the neighborhood. They weren't like these big ditty videos at a million dollars. I mean, this guy, this was like, you know, guy with a little camcorder or something. And I knew that these people wanted, uh, they needed clothing. And when they would have the Nike send stuff to them, Nike didn't appreciate them. Mm -hmm. So I would go to the set and see an LL Cool J and I would, be, I would sit on the set 18 hours. I get kick off with three or four of those sets. But the one time that somebody allowed me to put a shirt on them, I put a shirt on them and then I would take it back. And I would keep putting on different wrappers and different wrappers and different, and I'm taking it back. And, and I made sure that I didn't dry clean these things. So they made sure they gave them back because they stink, right? <laughs> so I knew that- You gave them some stanky ass shirts. Yeah, I gave them some stanky ass shirts. You got damn right. Now- um, I love it. Um, but these videos started to rotate and you know, uh, corporate America didn't understand the power of videos at that time. Yeah. And I started to become known as a, as a huge clothing company. Meanwhile, I'm still a waiter in Baldwin, Long Island, and I have these 10 little stinky t-shirts in my basement. But I was doing something I loved. I would have went on those video sets for free. Yeah. I was talking to a video chick. I was eating the free food over there. I was watching Old Dirty Bastard, Be Old Dirty Bastard. So, you know, I would have paid to be on those sets. Yeah. I was doing something I love. If you want to know why Jeff Bezos thinks adversity is good, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. Be proud not of your gifts, but of your hard work and your choices. 